four points, okay? Or eight points. So let's all get our, grab a Bible. There's plenty of them around here. We're going we're gonna to turn to James. So it's in the New Testament. Book of James, chapter 4, it's verse towards, 7. It's towards the back. Hebrews, James. Towards the way back. Raise your hands when you're there. This is the key verse, James 4. Say it out loud, Don. What page it's on? I need everybody to raise their hands because we're going to read this seven. together, okay? And if you, if you don't have it yet, just look up here. It's right here. All right. James 4, 7 and 8. Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. That word nigh, guys, it means to draw close. So nigh, he's going to draw close. He's going to bring you in. Like a mother giving you a hug or a father embracing you in love. He's, he wants to wrap you in his arms. We're going to be bouncing back and forth. Yeah. Um, resisting the devil and he will flee from you. Um, one of the only ways this, the Bible says you can get the devil to leave you alone for a little while is to resist him. In other words, don't give in to him. If you give in to him just a little bit, he's going to want more, more, more. Okay? Resisting, think about wrestling, arm wrestling, tug of war. You know that game? That's fun. Um, the defense in football and basketball and all the sports. Um, resistance and strength training, right? Um, so it's interesting. I put a fire on the bottom here because with a fire, it's interesting. If you're cold, what do you want to get in here? Fire. A fire, the heater, right? I'm going to draw an eye to it like God. With, um, but if the house is burning down or there's a forest fire, do you want to draw an eye to it? No. So it's like, you want to get away from it. Um, put up a firewall. So it is with God and the devil. Which way are you living? Close to God or close to Satan? I mean, how many, can I, how many of us can honestly say that we're living right? I mean, there's times in my life that I can honestly say, even now, that, I mean, most of us here, we all have given our lives to Christ, most of us. I mean, a lot of you gave your lives to Christ at the, the camp meeting over the summer. I mean, and I'm sure you guys go, it's a daily battle. We wake up every morning, and if we don't start our day right, I know for me, I have a 20-minute drive to work, and if I don't pray on my way to work, my whole day is, is awful. And does that mean every day I pray is going to be good? No. But if you go into the mindset of work like okay lord i know that something may arise today but help me to resist the devil and what he has planned to stop me from worshiping you if you go in with that mindset you're already one step ahead when that trial comes through because you've already asked and we'll get to it we've already asked for help we've asked for reinforcement all right, we're going to go to number one. Humble yourselves. All right, we're going to humble ourselves. We're going to bow, or it means we're going to, yeah, sorry, I couldn't read. So humble yourselves, you're going to either bow or make low. So we're going to go to Luke, or 
look at 2 Chronicles 7.14. Just so you guys know, I'm not going live, but what I want to try to do is put it on YouTube and then give a link to Jessica, Jared, and Joyce. Oh, nice. So yeah. that's what I'm trying to do. Second Chronicles 714. This also is another very important verse for your life. So it's in, first, remember, uh, first and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles. Are you there? Kila. Kila. All right, everybody. Chapter seven. There? Verse if you're not there, it's okay. 14. We're going to go. Right here, kid. Because otherwise, we're going to run out of time. Okay. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Okay, before we get too far into this, this verse, I want to make it very clear that this in the book of Chronicles, this is not talking to us, America. to America. <laughs> this is talking to the Israelite people. I don't want to take this verse out of context. But what I want you guys to understand is the, the concept of this verse is still very true for us. If we humble ourselves, we pray, we will hear from the Lord. Okay? Do you, under, do you guys understand what I'm saying? Because if we don't look at this verse, we're just pulling a verse out of the Bible. If you don't look at it in the whole context, it's, it's, it's bearing fault witness of the Bible. And I don't want to do that. So I want you guys to understand that this verse... It's, it's meant for the Israelites, but the word, we're looking at humble, okay? Because that's number one. We have to humble ourselves, okay? And, and all these things are the, the mark of your Christian walk. Humble, God. Actually, do you know what God resists? The Bible says one thing that God resists. He doesn't resist the devil. He, he doesn't. The devil is just a little P to him. Who does God resist? No, he doesn't us. resist the devil. I, I think they said it. Us. us, in a way, the proud. Yep. Anytime we're prideful in our heart, pride is what the de the Lord turns away from. And if you don't want the Lord to resist you, but if you do not humble yourself, He will have to resist you. God does not care for the proud. The Bible says pride comes before the fall. When you lift yourself up in pride, you're being like the devil, and you will fall. If you humble yourself, God will exalt you. This is very important truth. Can everybody say, God resists the proud? God, God resists the, the proud. proud. But he gives grace, but he gives grace, grace to the humble. To the, the humble. Do you want God to give you grace, or do you want him to resist you? Grace. Grace. So mm, amen. humble yourself. This is key. If the Bible says pride comes before a fall, I want you guys to know that pride comes before a fall. When you feel your heart getting prideful, it's time to pray right away. Stop. Even if it's in sports, you can be confident, you can be good at stuff, but when you see pride coming in your heart, mm. you need to stop and ask God, please keep me humble, Jesus. I'd be nothing without you. They want an example of pride, Tony. I'll give you an example. How many of you watch? How many of you know who Carson Wentz is? Carson, Carson Wentz is a quarterback in the NFL, and he's an outspoken Christian. He played for the. Uh, he went to college at North Dakota State, and got drafted by the Eagles. Carson got hurt. He was very prideful, and saying, "I'm, I'm, I'm great. There's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing." to fix, but he was playing like garbage. I mean, he's playing pretty horrible. So what happened? He, he got hurt, and guess what? Guess where he is now? He just got traded to a new team, and he may not even start. Because he was prideful. I'll give you another example of myself. Okay. Oh, Maybe not. Hey. Okay. This is a guy 
yeah, it's, when when we're prideful, it a lot can happen. I when I was in high school, I was just like most high school kids. I didn't care about God. All I cared about was myself. And I started running running with the wrong group. I got very prideful during football, and uh, it, it ultimately led to me getting into a lot of trouble. I don't want to go into a bunch of details because it's just not it's not good. So that prideful that prideful behavior it started to escalate. Okay, I I thought I was I got to the point where I thought I was invincible from the police. Okay, where I was, ne I could do things in the secret, in the darkness, where nobody could see me, and nobody knew about them. Well, you know what? Eventually, all that stuff comes out. What you guys are doing in your personal lives, in your, in the darkness of your own house, in, in the darkness of the shadows of the world, eventually, I'm telling you from experience, and I don't know what it, if if anybody here has them. But I'm telling you, I did, and they come out. Because the pride comes before the fall. When you get prideful and you don't think you're going to get caught, it's all, it's always, it may not be tomorrow, it may not be next month, but it's going to come out. It, and it's not, it, all it's going to do is it's going to hurt you, it's going to hurt those you love, and those, those that love you. And pride is tricky. It sneaks in like... People don't set out, most people, especially Christians, do not set out to be destroyed by pride. I just, I just got back from watching Dominic's basketball team, and I'm telling you, I could take one look at that team and tell you that 95% of them are very prideful. They're all about themselves. They're like a ball hog, right? Like a ball yeah, hog? I get a lot of those at work. <laughs> I mean, everywhere you go, you see people that are very prideful. But yeah. well, we got to keep moving here. Yeah. So hopefully you guys um, really get that first point. Because you won't get anywhere if you don't start here. Start, And that's why it's good to pray on your knees. Because it just reminds us to humble ourselves. Okay? Right when you get out of bed, sometimes you just, yeah. the first thing is go just go right by it, right, go right by your bed. You, you can bow right by your bed. Matthew, chapter 4. Then Jesus. Go ahead. Jesus. 
scamper of the devil. Good. Good job. Good. All right, Dom, verse 2. When he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and. So, you guys see that? The first two verses says, The devil tempted Jesus, and he for 40 days and 40 nights he, he fasted. That means he ate nothing for 40 days and nights. Why? Jesus. He's fasting. He's fasting. He's fasting. He's trying to get close with the Lord. It's okay. I got you covered, buddy. Ready? And when the temper came to him, he, he said, Hey, guys. What's the number one rule when somebody's reading? Don't laugh. Yeah. All right. Don't want to hear it again, or you'll be staying home next week. All right. He said, he said if, thou if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. All right, good job. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded of the mouth of God. So do you guys see that? The first ver in the last two verses it says, And when the tempter came, so the devil came in, he tried to, what did he do? He tried to bribe Jesus, saying, If you be the... The Lord, or you be God, right, commanding the rocks to be made of bread. Verse 5. And, and Jesus says, in his own words, he says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Almost ready. Yeah. Go ahead, Maria. Verse 5. Can you help Julia? Help Julia? Okay. Okay. Who knows what the pinnacle? Who knows what a pinnacle is? You know what a pinnacle is? Yeah. Just say it. Is Just it say it. Like it's like the top like, of the. I don't know. Never mind. The highest point. It, yeah. It's basically the highest point of the temple. It's the very, very top. Peak of the building. Top like, of the you building. Have you seen in Sioux Falls, like that big cathedral thing? It'd be like, you know, the devil. He's like he wasn't a fallen angel, so a big beautiful devil. creature. Taking you to the top of this angel and looking out and devil. saying, You can have then all of this, this whole New York city. It. Go ahead. Up into uh, let's have Herica do six and then oh, she'll okay. do seven. And say it unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and life. in their hands they shall bear thee up. Last, what is this last at any time, time thou dash thy foot against yes. the stone. Jesus. Said, okay, real loud. Ready? Number seven, Akila. Jesus said unto unto him it is written written again. Thou thou shalt the, shalt the not not tempt tempt the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God. Good job. Think of that. So the Good. devil takes takes Jesus up to the highest point where That's he verse seven. everything. Right? And the devil says, cast yourself down and command your angels to catch me. You know what the Lord said? <laughs> Do not tempt me! That's literally what he said. I mean, he didn't... This, you don't get it, but the verse literally implicates that Jesus gave a stern warning to the devil. Right there. He said, Do not tempt me! The Lord God. All right. Go ahead. I didn't mean to scare you guys. <laughs> yes, you did. Again, the devil taking him up into a high mountain and to let him out, to let him Show out, to let him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. 
It's showeth, like like sh- to show something, to put it in front of you. Sh- but it's sheweth. It's Old English. But to showeth. To show. He basically showed. Yep, good work. Go ahead there. So what's the devil doing here? He's saying if you fall down and worship him. It's, it's tempting him, right? Yeah. Go ahead, Faith. Um, verse 10. Alright. Ari, verse 11. Then the devil leaded him and behold, angels came and visited him him on the Oh, that's good. Now we'll do, that's usually the end. We'll have you two. It's going to start a whole other thing. So we'll have you two read two other verses. All right. Time. So in those verses, can somebody tell me what what is one of the devil's bargaining chips? What is one of them? Go ahead. He knows the gospel. He knows he knows the Bible. Dominic? Temptation. But I'm looking for I'm looking for a little more. What is he gonna tempt you with, Lloyd? Mm. Mm-hmm. He was like showing Jesus like the whole world and Jesus could give it to him. There you go. What if I mean what if some spiritual being was literally like, I'm going to give you power over this world. I mean, you are going to have, be, be world power. I mean, Satan, he does have a lot of God. I mean, he does have a lot of power in this earth. Jesus has more power than him. But, I mean, wouldn't that be pretty crazy? If he's, what, if somebody, what if the spiritual being said you can have all the riches and fame? You can be the most famous person in the entire world. With fame comes lots of money. So you'd be the richest and the most famous. That'd be pretty and hard And you to couldn't down. walk down the street without anybody knowing your name. It would be pretty tempting, like some of the, the devil tempts with the lust of the flesh, your fleshly lust. He tempts with the, the pride of life. Look what I did. Look what I have. And the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye. And everything you can see. He, he knows how to get to each different person. Um, did you guys notice that he does a lot of ifs? Did you notice he kept saying to Jesus, if you do this, I'll do that. Go ahead. Who's this? The devil. Yeah. Huh? What was the question? Oh, did you? I just said, did you notice that the devil? Oh, the, the original question is some of the... What did you pick up from this story that we read about the devil and how he works? Don't fall for You're on the right track. Don't fall for him. Mm-hmm. Anything come to your mind? Tempt you to do things that you shouldn't. So what if what if this? What if there's a position on a school sport or in a school program that you really want, but the program goes against God, what what God believes and says that are right, or student council, or, student council or whatever. So, in in doing this one thing that you really want to do, you have to you have to make a moral decision. Is that something I want to I want that God wants me to do, or is that something the devil is leading me to do? Because in every situation, we have two choices, right? Right. Girls? Yes. Two? two? Mm-hmm. So so God, always, they always give us two. Even though this one seems like what we want and what God is giving us, sometimes it's not, right? Sometimes in life, we have to make the hard decision. I really want to do this, but this is the right way, even though it's going to be harder. Because ultimately what happens is, God will take you down this hard road, and you know what's going to happen? You're going to come all the way back around, and you're still going to get what you want. But it's going to be better, because you traveled God's way. Just because 
this way looks like it's harder doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. Sometimes in life, the hard way is the right way. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I'm saying that from experience. I, I don't know how many times I had to make a decision about moving or a job where in the end, God has brought it all the way back around and put me right where I'm supposed to be in the end. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's something like, maybe the job, uh, maybe you're going to get your first job, you're 14 or 15 this summer, and maybe the job that pays more money, but you might have to do just a little something that's wicked, or you might have to work every Sunday and never get out to church, but you get paid $2 more an hour. So one job you get $10 an hour, one job you get 12 but you never get to make it to church. What do you, what do you think God really wants you to do? Yeah, the ten. Oh, the ten. So I'm going to use Dominic as an example because of the conversation we had earlier. Okay, it's just like this. Sometimes the right way is means you have to stand alone. Okay, that's the hardest thing you'll ever have to do. I'm telling you right now. But it's the great, you'll receive the biggest reward for standing alone. Dominic made a comment to me on the way home. Dad, why do I have to go to Bible study? I just played a basketball game and I'm tired. I haven't eaten in eight hours. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, here's the situation. Okay, you have a choice, right? You have a choice. You made the choice to play basketball, correct? You also have a commitment to who? God. Say it really loud. God! Oh, see. Well, who do you think is going to want you to take precedent? Irene? God. You're right. And sometimes, in the end, it's either basketball or God, right? Or it's, or it's driving or it's anything in our lives that we're trying to do and we're trying to push God we're trying to say, no, not today, God. I, I'm busy. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Another one, you guys, because you are teenagers, um, and another thing what Satan does is he tries to tempt you to give you something now that he ha God has it for you later. For instance, a spouse. We've, pray we've tried to teach you guys to pray for a godly husband if you're a, a girl. That someday you will marry a godly husband. And if you're a boy, that you'll marry a godly um, woman. And we pray for you guys in that. In our own kids. In all of you guys. And most likely God does have somebody for you. But you know what Satan is going to try really hard to do? Is to get you to take it now. Take a boyfriend. Take a girlfriend. He doesn't want you being sexual with them. It's quite obvious in the Bible. And so the devil is going to say, come on, but I, this is the most beautiful girl. These guys are going to be like, this girl is hot and blah, blah, blah. And the girls are going to be like, but this guy really loves me and I really love him. So it's got to be okay because God is love. I mean, God is the most loving thing in the world. So, I mean, this guy really loves me and I really love him. And we think it's for now. But it's not. So there's going to be, what about success in school, in college? You will most likely be tempted to cheat on some serious things. Because you can be like, it's just a small thing and I'm going to get a better job because if I can just get this right grade, I'm going to get into this right college and get this right job. Can you see how this is going to happen? Guys? Yeah. Yeah. We got a long way to go here. So these are practical ways. We can save some of them. If it's no, we got it. Okay. You just you just these tricks, these tricks of the devil are old. They're old. They're all the way back in the Garden of Eden. All yeah. right. So we've got our the devil has a plan, right? Now we know we know the devil's battle plan. Okay. Now we have to number five. We have to rely on the blood. Of who? Jesus. Jesus. What? Jesus. Jesus. Oh, man, that guy. Is that, is it a Joseph? <laughs> <laughs> Whose well, blood are we relying on? Whose blood are we relying on? Jesus! Jesus! Oh, 
What, so what song did we sing? Come on. <laughs> All right. Rapona? Yeah, perfect. Turn, I want you to go to Revelation, last book in the Bible. <laughs> Okay. Chapter 12, verse 11. Revelation, chapter 12, verse 11. Revelation. All right, quiet. Yep. Are you, are you girls there? Yeah. 12, 11. 12, 11. You there, Rafona? Yeah. Go ahead. Chapter 11, verse, or sorry, chapter 12, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. No, it's not. It should say, and they overcame. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, that's okay. Good job. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Ooh, so who did they overcome? In that verse, who did they overcome? Guys, they overcame him. Who did they overcome? Yeah, they overcame Satan. By what? What did What did they by the use? Blood. The blood of the the lamb. And who's the lamb? Who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Jesus. Oh my goodness, who? Jesus. Oh, there we go. So, you lost your voice. I think I can still hear you. So Jesus started Christianity. So does anybody else besides Dominic and Julia? I'm sorry. Because I already know you know these. Um, does anybody else know who Lost their life for for uh, standing up for Jesus. Oh, those are people. Oh, being a so here, I'm just gonna give you a list. Okay, are you ready? Who knows Stephen? Who knows about Stephen? I said not Dominic and Julia. <laughs> so Stephen, Stephen was stoned to death. Guess who was standing in the crowd and probably gave the command to throw the rocks? Oh. I said not Julia in the head. What Julia <laughs> said. I, so Saul at the time, which became Paul, the Apostle Paul, before he was saved, he most likely, it doesn't clarify, though you can clarify me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't clarify that he gave the command 